Hi, so it's come to my attention that a lot of you don't think you could 3D print and um, my role here is to call you out on how absolutely bogus that is. A lot of people have been saying in my comments, eh, it's too hard. Homie, if you have a computer and you have a printer, you can 3D print and that is the entire purpose of this video. How to 3D print with a nerd who just uses printers for nerdy things. So I'm not typically a fan of two-parters. I like to kind of knock it all out in one, but I think it is appropriate here to divide this up into two parts. This video being one that talks more so about the computer side of printing, and the second video being more so about using your printer, leveling the bed, etc. So without delay, I'll still try to entertain you. Hopefully this doesn't seem like just a bunch of like information being thrown at you. It's going to be very, very simplified and hopefully it's going to be fun too. So the three things that we're going to talk about in this video are one, what you're going to print, aka where do I get the model, two, what you're going to print with, aka the material, and three, how do you take that model and send it to the printer, which will be your slicing software. We are gonna go step by step, it's gonna be very simple. And obviously, since it is gonna be so simple, we may not hit on everything, but if there's a question you have, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, there are so many 3D printing tutorials on the internet, have no idea why you're here. I'm just a nerd that uses the printers to print Iron Man suits. But if you have a question regarding the material, what setting to use, blah, 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 promise you the answers on the internet or in a YouTube video somewhere. So number one, finding out what you're gonna print. Now you might have a vision of I'm gonna print an Iron Man suit right away, which you can, more power to you, but we're gonna start out with something small for the sake of this video. Now you people that are saying I can't 3D print may be using I can't model as an excuse. Bruh, that's not an excuse. There are so many pre-existing models out on the internet, it's absolutely unbelievable. And I'm about to show you where you can get them. Okay, look at me, I got my, my camera in the corner. It's like I'm a gamer or something. This is things.com. Also, this video is sponsored by Things, so thank you, Things. When I said you could find free files on the internet, I mean you can find free files on the internet. And Things is definitely one of those websites that offers a ton of them. So if you have something specific in mind, you can look it up. Um, I know I looked up Iron Man earlier and I saw someone had uploaded a helmet on here. Once you click it, you can kind of click on it, spin it around, and then it has an option for you to download it for free. I do have a helmet already, so we're gonna go with something a little bit different here. So there are a ton of files for you to choose from on here. Um, you can upload some yourself, and you can do a geometric search, which is kind of fun. You can actually like upload a model, and it'll find you models similar to that one. So anyway, there's a ton on here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a smaller one just to show you guys how to do that. Was that Bernie? And it did. That's actually hilarious. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do something simple. We're gonna go with the little Among Us guy, all right? It's cute, simple, I like it, we're using it. So I just logged into my account and I'm gonna go ahead and download it and boom, literally just like that, it's there. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight into finding pre-existing models on websites like Things because I promise you, if you have something you wanna print, chances are it already exists and you should definitely look for it. So once you've figured out what you wanna print, next step is to figure out, okay, what material do I wanna use? And that really depends if you want it to be more so flexible, there's plastics for that. If you want it to be rigid, there's plastics for that too. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna stick with one, the most commonly used one. And if you're new to 3D printing, it's most likely gonna be what you're gonna use. And that material is called PLA. Every material you buy for a 3D printer will typically come in a spool. They can be in different sizes, shapes, colors, and it's just plastic wrapped around this other piece of plastic. If you see something that's 3D printed, nine times out of 10 is probably going to be made out of PLA. But there are other materials like TPU, which is flexible, ABS, which withstands heat. And if you're interested in any of those other materials, I'll be putting a link down in the description that'll kind of describe what each does and what it's used for. Each one has different properties to print with regarding temperature, speed, etc. So it's definitely something important to know. But for now, we're just going to learn how to use PLA. So we have our file downloaded. We know the material we're going to use. Now, how do we send it to the printer? That's what a software called a slicer is used for. You basically insert your file into the slicer, orient it however you want, change a couple of settings so you have the right thicknesses, and that slicer will turn it into a language that the printer understands. There's a ton of different slicers out there. The one I'm going to be using for this video is probably the most commonly used one also, which is called Cura. Links to download Cura will also be in the description. So now we're going to actually take a look at the software itself so I can explain to you what the different settings are, what they do, and how to know what you should and shouldn't change. Okay, so when you first open Cure, it's gonna look something like this. They're gonna ask you what type of printer do you have. Um, if you're gonna do it my way with, you know, a SD card, plugging it into the printer so that you don't have like your computer constantly plugged in, you're gonna click 
add a non-network printer and then you're gonna go and find the printer that you own. So for example, I'm a fan of Creality. So I would click on Creality and I would click whatever printer I have. Yeah, if you have a printer that's not on this list, I would be very surprised. There are a ton. Anyway, you're gonna go through and add the printer you have. I have a CR10, so I'm gonna select CR10 and then continue with next and then just gonna hit next again because they already have all the specs in for my printer type. And now I can scroll in. This is what the bed looks like and just kind of a preview of where I'm gonna print. Next step is to click your STL file, which by the way, anything that you print needs to be in the STL format, but anything that you download from websites like things are always gonna be in a STL format. You're gonna take this, drag it over, and it should go ahead and pop in here. You can scroll in, can around and pick them up and move them. Um, there's a bunch of different options on the side over here so that that you can click and move him to the left, right, up, wherever. You can rotate them however which way you'll want to. If you think it'd be better to print them upside down, you can print them upside down. You can lay them flat. I don't know, whatever, whatever floats your goat, I guess. You can mirror him back and forth, and then heck, you can you can even scale them up. We can make him gigantic, I don't know. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna put the scale back down to a regular 100%, sit him right side up. But that is how you get the file in the software. Make sure you've got your right printer selected up here. Choose the size nozzle you're using, just a hint, if you haven't changed any nozzles out on your printer or done anything like that, probably gonna be a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, pretty standard, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have that in, don't worry. So now comes the part that everyone thinks is confusing. Everyone thinks, oh, the set Settings. I don't know what settings to use. Okay, guess what? I started printing maybe like two or three years ago. And like, of course, I don't know all the settings that exist in the world, but I'm gonna show you the really important ones. In order to get to those more complicated settings, you click on this little pencil over here. So these are your really important settings, okay? Your layer height, that's how high the nozzle is gonna move each time it moves up. That's gonna be more so dependent on what size nozzle you're using, right? Because the bigger size nozzle you have, the more plastic that's coming out and kind of take some bigger steps there. But a very standard layer height is is going to be 0.2 millimeters so if this is your first time printing just leave that there. If you want to explore that a little bit more and print in higher layer heights I'd suggest looking up the maximum height for whatever size nozzle you have. But for now I said we're going to simplify things we're going to keep it 0.2. Really the only thing you should probably pay attention to in this section over here um, is the wall line count. That is how many perimeters the printer is gonna go around. So that's quite literally how many walls are gonna be on the outside of your print. Two is typically a good number, unless you're wanting something that can hold a lot of weight, you might wanna amp that up a little bit. But for now, we're gonna keep it two. Infill is what the inside of your print is gonna look like. So obviously when you 3D print, it doesn't just create a solid plastic piece unless you were to set this number to 100. To save on plastic, it prints around the outside and leaves the inside hollow to some extent. The best infill pattern so far that I've used has been triangles, which means the inside just looks like a bunch of triangles. And typically you're not gonna need any more than 10 to 15% infill. And to show you what infill looks like, this is what it does. This is the preview mode in Cura, and you can see as it prints up, it fills the middle with triangle shapes. And if we were to increase this number to say 50%, there'd be a lot more triangles and a lot more material on the inside, making it stronger. But for prints like this, typically 10 or something like that will work fine. We scroll down now to material. It talks about temperature settings. So each different material you have will have a different temperature that they say to use. So for example, I've got a roll here of Polyterra PLA from Poly maker and each roll should tell you what the temperature should be. It's not a guessing game. This one says to print between 190 and 230 degrees Celsius. I typically aim for straight up in the middle. So since I'm going to be using this roll of purple PLA that says it should be in between 190 and 230, I'm going to go ahead and put 210. The build plate temperature is typically how hot the bed of your printer gets. And the whole point of that is to help the plastic stick to the glass. However, with PLA, it's kind of up to you as to whether you want to use it or not. For other materials, it definitely requires a heated bed just to help things stick. However, for PLA, you can either use the heated bed or you don't really have to. For me, I use a glue stick method, which means I don't use any heat and I just take a glue stick and go over the glass and it sticks perfectly fine. And I'll talk about that later in the next video. So if you'd like to use the heated bed that comes with the printer, I'd say go ahead and put 60 just because that seems to be pretty standard. If you're like me and you don't really care to use it, you like the glue stick method, go ahead and just put zero in there. It shows up orange, but it's fine. I do it all the time. Print speed, that's literally just how fast the nozzle is moving. Obviously, the faster you go, the more likely it is to mess up or have lower quality. But you also don't want to go so slow that it takes 10 years. For materials like TPU, you'll learn that you have to go slower, probably half that speed, just to be able to get a good quality print. But for PLA, we can go at about 60. Super Saiyanic.
fast. We're only really trying to cover super, super simple settings here. So we're gonna skip down to support, which I would say is pretty important. I'm gonna say you always wanna click that button. Basically, if you don't know what support is, all you have to know is that a printer cannot print on top of nothing. It moves up and if there's something sticking out with a bunch of air underneath it, it's not gonna just be able to print on top of the air. So it builds up these supports that you break away after the print is done so that it can get to that point. So I would always say generate support, I'd leave everywhere. And you know, I kind of jack it up to 60 cause you know, it don't need support at 45 degrees, it'd be fine. And to show you what that does, again, we're gonna go in our little simulation of what it looks like being printed. When this guy is being printed, you can see the back of his backpack is over absolutely nothing. So how is it supposed to build up? Well, it builds these little supports. And then once it gets to the backpack, it prints on top of the supports. Once you're done with that print, you can take those supports and break them away. Finally, build plate adhesion. This is basically the method that you wanna use just to hold the print to the plate. You have skirt, brim, raft, or just none. This is what a skirt looks like. It's not connected to the part in any way, shape, or form. Just kinda lets you see that everything's working correctly before it starts actually printing the part. You can choose brim, which kinda has an outer layer around it to help it hold to the plate better. Or you can choose raft, which is like a thicker version of that. I always use brim though. So those are your very, very basic printer settings. We're gonna go up and hit this little button to kind of get a bigger view. Again, you're probably looking at something like this, not in the preview mode like I was just showing you. However, if you click slice, first of all, it'll go through, slice it up, and then tell you how long your print's gonna be and how much plastic it's gonna use. So this says it's gonna be an hour print. It's only gonna use eight grams, which is like absolutely nothing. And then if you go up to preview, that's where you can get to the screen I was looking at. You can scroll this up and down to see what the print's gonna look like from the first layer to the last. And it's pretty helpful just to make sure all the supports are where you want them to be and making sure that it's not a corrupt file. Hopefully that explanation just kind of helped you understand what each of those settings does. Also just FYI, anytime you move the file, rotate it, whatever, you're just gonna have to go back and re-slice it um, just because the software has to reconsider what it's gonna look like as a printed object. So now you have your object with all the right settings and all you gotta do is take this and send it to the Printer. The way you do that is you take a micro SD card or an SD card. Typically, if you bought a printer, it will come with an SD card. So my CR10 came with a little micro SD and a USB adapter. So I'm gonna put this in the adapter and stick it in my computer. And as soon as I stick it into my computer, it'll recognize it. And instead of saying save to file, it'll say save to removable drive. So I'm gonna make sure over here, it's called what I wanna call it. I'll just say among us guy and I'll hit save removable drive and I'll hit eject, take my SD card out and boom. Boom. There you go. The code that the printer needs is now on this SD card. So you have your SD card and next step is to literally just plug it into the printer. In the next episode, I'm going to go over stuff like that along with leveling the bed, making sure the plastic adheres to the bed and a bunch of stuff like that. But hopefully in this one, you learn more so about how to download models, what they look like, how to throw them into the right software and turn it into something that the printer understands. Also, if you're interested in learning more about different materials besides PLA, definitely check out that link I put in the description below. It kind of talks about all the different major your types of plastic and what each does, what it's best for. So definitely check that out. Because even though I do mostly print with PLA, heck, the suits are made out of PLA, things like TPU are pretty helpful. This is TPU. It's flexible. It prints like rubber. It's pretty cool. So I definitely suggest after you get used to printing with things like PLA, go look into some other filaments. All of them are different. Some of them even require enclosures like ABS because you're really not supposed to breathe it in once it's heated up. But it also has its advantages. So it's very interesting. Anyway, if you've never 3D printed before. Hopefully that taught you something. If you have printed before, sorry, I probably didn't tell you anything that you already didn't know, but hopefully you at least enjoyed it. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next couple of days for the second part of the video. See you.